Good morning, everyone. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Vicki Bunch. I work in workforce development at the Jackson Chamber. And this morning, I have the pleasure of introducing to you David Hayes. David is the vice chairman and CEO of Security Bank. He has had a successful career in banking, uh, starting um, 25 years ago with Union, National, Union Planners National Bank in Memphis. Uh, he's been a valuable resource in making community bank concerns heard nationwide. He formerly served as president of Security Bank, but now serves um, as vice chairman of the board. He also serves on the boards of Gates Banking and Trust Company, the Bank of Jackson and Patriot Bank. He attended the University of Memphis. Any Tigers in the room? <laughs> and the Stony Air Graduate School of Banking. He is very active in community affairs. He serves as the chairman of the Dyer County Industrial Development Board. Vice Chairman of Regional Economic Development of the Dyersburg Dyer County Chamber of Commerce and Board Member of the Dyersburg Electric Company. He is past Chairman of the United Way of West Tennessee Board of Directors and past Chairman of the Dyersburg State Community College Foundation. So he is very involved. Uh, David is also a member of the Industrial Action Team and member of the Board of Main Street Dyersburg. He is previously a board member of West Star and I've seen some fellow West Stars in the room, uh, West Star leaders. He also has a variety of leadership positions within his local church. He was named Dyersburg, Dyer County Man of the Year in 1999, and again, yes again, in 2008 by the Chamber of Commerce. He and his wife, Sarah, have two children and two grandchildren. So, David, welcome to the stage. As I sat there and, and listened to that presentation, you know, when you get to be my age, you get real reflective on life. And uh, you start thinking about what is it that I can do? In fact, my geriatric cardiologist, when I visited her uh, three months ago, she said, are you still working? I said, well, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, but I'm transitioning to retirement. And I said, so I'm taking off on every Friday. So the only reason I'm here today is out of respect to, to Matt, because I'm normally in shorts and a t-shirt at this time of the morning. Um, several years ago, and you're gonna see a presentation that I've been trying to quit giving at Westar for the last five years. Uh, but Charlie Deal and Virginia won't uh, let me do that. Um, but here goes. Okay, the one thing I learned about presentations as I travel throughout the country, especially when you had the Federal Reserve people, those people that control monetary policy, they always started with a disclaimer. The Opinions we're expressing today are ours, not those of the Federal Reserve. And it's kind of like, well, why in the heck are you here? <laughs> uh, so I just decided, well, I needed to give a disclaimer. A and my disclaimer is, I am not running for political office, so I don't have to be politically correct. <laughs> How many politicians are in the room so I know who I'm going to offend before the day's over? <laughs> And then I am close to retirement. I turned 74, still working, we're not sure why. Uh, but I want y'all to keep working because I'm gonna be dependent on your social security <laughs> check and my Medicare. <laughs> Several years ago, I came up with this concept and it's, it's because I'm, I moved from Memphis. I lived in both ends of the economic uh, arena, Frazier and Germantown. So I, I saw culture at both sides. Uh, and then I moved to Dyersburg. And I thought I was a conservative until I moved to, to Dyersburg <laughs> and found out I was probably a, a liberal in comparison to most of the people around there. However, we have good people in all of our communities. But as you look at those numbers, and this concept came to me, let's talk reality. 
our people, our voters, those people who gather in our communities, are not talking about the issues that you're here today seeing. They're talking about the Friday night football game. That is the most important thing in their sphere of perspectives. I always told Bob Porter, or Bob Corker, excuse me, when he came to Dyersburg, I said, Bob, remember, Dyersburg is on the west coast of West Tennessee. <laughs> Think about that a minute. If you go 13 miles, you're going to be in the river. So we are on the west coast, not politically, but uh, geographically. And as I look around this audience, I know that even in Jackson, based on the time I'm here, we kind of categorize ourselves where we live, North Jackson, East Jackson, South Jackson, probably missing something else. I know a couple of people who won't go from Midtown Jackson across the interstate. So their perspective is where they are. And I do, I do think geographics make a difference in how we think. So I came up with the concept that's what is talked about on the Monday mornings in the local coffee shops is the Friday night football game. And I maintain that it's different in the big city than it is in smaller cities. You have to ask yourself, is Jackson a big city or a small city? There are pluses of both. Well, what I learned when I moved to Dyer County is that Dyersburg High School and Dyer County High School did not play football against each other for over 30 years. And, but however, those people in the local coffee shop still talked about that last game. Now, they are playing now, so I'm assuring they're talking about the most recent game. Well, in Dyersburg, you used to have a place called the Cozy Kitchen. And that finally closed, and it became Chick-fil-A, uh, Dave's on the Square, and McDonald's. And I will guarantee you, in Jackson and Madison County, if you go by the local places, Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, the local coffee shop, you are going to see, predominantly, a group of old men sitting and drinking coffee from about 8 o'clock till about 10 o'clock. And you probably can write down where that is around here. Well, in their minds, they think solving the problems are simple. And they have worked through that in their mind, and the issue is, I don't understand why they don't fix it. It's not that hard. Those people are voters, remember that. And so I maintain that all the problems in all of our communities are solved every morning at the local coffee shop. And those are the ones who call the politicians and say, I don't understand why you're not doing your job. I don't understand why you don't do this. It's not that hard. Just get it done. Well, I'm old enough and, and came from Union City before I moved to Memphis. I remember riding the Greyhound bus on 51 and seeing a list that's up in front of you, Brown Shoe Company. Salant and Salant, who made shirts, and then Goodyear, Dyersburg Fabrics, World Color Press, the list goes on. The good news is we've replaced them, but the mindset of some people are, I remember when. 
Well, I think we've transitioned through a lot of things in our careers and our time on this earth. Agricultural age, I mean, I can remember my first job for my uncle, and I thought it was a great job because I was about six, and he says, I'll pay you a penny a pound for cotton picking. And it's like, it didn't take me long to understand that, you know, that was not a good job. <laughs> I did not do it very well either. Uh, and we went through the industrial age, which we still are, the information age. Uh, we went through the financial meltdown, the Great Recession, the recovery. I think we're still in this one, the divided national political leadership, or as I say, our lack thereof. And then the great lockdown, and we have this exciting news on the horizon, the Blue Oval City. It's going to change our communities. So where are we? Where are we going? Why can't we figure this out? And do we have leadership or just talk? This slide uh, actually was created in 2006, but I think it's still appropriate today. Are we there? Are we at the bottom of whatever we see? And I think how we look at that is important. Okay, math. I got a magic number, 72. You're sitting there saying, what is so magic about that? Well, I maintain that if I ask you to solve 72, we'd all come up with a different formula. And I think that's important to keep in mind is we do and we think differently. And there are a lot of factors on that. In about the year 2000, TVA did a project, and it, it all, it's stuck in my mind ever since. They had a group like this, and they had us to, to write in the decades what happened then that made a difference in where we were today. So, you know, it became very obvious that what was important or what you had seen that made a difference today was driven by when you got there. For me, I didn't know what happened in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and 90s in Harrisburg. And I also maintained that how you look at things is dependent on what you see. When I got to Dyersburg, one of the things that hit me just between the eyes was we would have young kids from school coming visiting our bank. And there were three buildings in Dyersburg that had an elevator. And the predominant response from the young people who visited us said the most amazing thing to them was the elevator ride. And I am sitting there thinking, you know, I've been in the Sears Tower, I've been in, you know, all these places. And the most amazing thing these young people saw was an elevator. And then it hit me. Many of them never had been outside of the city. And I maintain that in Jackson, just like Dyersburg, you have young people who have never seen a different world other than the world of their community that they live in every day. I, I've kind of thought through this recently um, you know, there are people who still have flip phones. I know two, and, and I, I don't want to embarrass you, but there, there might be one or two in the audience. My sister-in-law has one, and every time I 
come over and visit her. She always got something she needs me to do on her flip phone. I don't know. I long forgot that. And I tell her, you need a smartphone. And then my wife reminds me, no, won't work. And then, of course, I, I, I'm an iPhone guy, but all of the technical guys I have working for me are Androids. And, you know, we, we, we don't talk to each other. <laughs> and then we have people who don't want to text or don't want an email. They want you to call them. Well, I don't think that's very efficient, but sometimes you're going to have to do it. And then, then there are people who will send you an email and send you a text and say, I sent you an email. <laughs> do you think I don't look at my emails? <laughs> my point is, and I think it's obvious, that we have different people. And how we get to those people is going to be dependent on how we communicate with them. And people don't like change. I, I'm a change guy. I mean, since 1967, I've been doing systems and technology and all of that. People don't like to change. Because at the end of the day, they'll say, well, you go first. Nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. Different people, different backgrounds, different expectations. But we all need to work together. A couple of quotes that are, are dated. It's just some of these slides are a little dated, but the points are still there, and they're fairly significant. Look, we've gone through an economic crisis. We're still going through an economic crisis, and it, it was a great it was a reset. I mean, it's like the button was pushed and everything got changed. Some people understood that. And they're the ones that are prospering today as companies and leaders. And oh yes, Elvis has left the mountain. <laughs> I can assure you if you go to the candlelight service at Graceland, there are people who think Elvis is still going to show up at that event. That's who we deal with every day in our communities. And this is the one I think that affects our young people. They're going to be going through a cycle where they're not going to be as successful as their successful parents. And what is the impact on them? I had a conversation with a youth minister years ago, and he had been dealing with a uh, young person who was going to was tempting suicide. And I said, you know, is, is that rare? And this was in 1990. And he said, no. There's a realization as young people graduate from high school that they are not going to be as financially successful as their parents. What's the psychic that puts in there? And you saw the statistics on mental health. I worry about this for my gra grandchildren and your children and your grandchildren. What is that impact on them? How do they see the world? How are they going to move forward? And then our families, and we see it every day played out in our society. You know, what, 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 where are we? Where are we going to do it? Oh. I, I do a lot of work with uh, workforce development, and I think we always have to come back and say, do we have the educated workforce for the new jobs? Is the culture, you know, is their work ethic still there? And then we all know that we deal every day with, you know, the, are they drug free? Talk to anybody that runs a manufacturing firm, probably anywhere in West Tennessee, and how many applicants they get 
that they can get past the drug scheme. They are not going to hire those people. Got too much liability with the kind of equipment they're using. Uh, I'll tell you a story. Uh, it kind of goes back to, I think, Rose or, or Richard. I was asked to go speak to, uh, uh, I can't remember the nice name they have, but it's the, all the young people were kicked out of school. Detention or, you know, it's what we used to call it. And uh, they're going to school there. And, and as I was coming up to get prepared to talk to them, uh, there was a young man that was coming in and he didn't have his belt on. And the lady at the front said, uh, you know the rules. The rules are you're not going to get in and get credit today without a belt on. And he just started going off. And I'm just sitting there watching it. Well, he calls somebody and they bring him the belt. He happens to be one of the kids in the class that I was going to speak to. And so as I prepared, I said, I got one thing to say. You didn't have your belt on this morning. That was a rule. If you worked for me and you didn't have your belt on, you'd be going home too. Trying to make a connection. There are rules. There are things you have to do, and you need to live to them. And unfortunately, sometimes I don't think they get that support at home. This is a little outdated, but it, the, the graphic should put it in perspective. As we look throughout the country, and I'm sure your data shows this, we, we still lag behind parts of the country. Uh, my grandchildren and my son's family now lives in Minnesota. They've been there almost 10 years. It is different than here. And it, a lot of it's driven by education. Sure, they got problems, but not as a large percentage. Poverty, again, if you look at the South and the percentage of people who are 50% below the federal poverty line, you know, this is not a statistic you want to be living in and recruiting in. We as leaders today face a lot of decisions, and sometimes we think it's all solved by money. It is not solved by money. It's solved by leadership. How many of y'all heard that statement from somebody? It was good enough for grandpa, good enough for grandma. I don't know why we need to worry about that. Not the same place they lived. Not the same place. But it does affect what we can get done in our communities because, again, those people are are voters and they make decisions that we all. Some of you may remember a guy here in Jackson, Mike Filpo. Mike has passed, but Mike had connections with all of the electric departments throughout West Tennessee. And he said, you ought to look at your community with a critical eye. And I have taken that, in my experience, is I look at where I live when I come in from being out of town as though it was the first time I had been there. I drive 412 a lot because, you know, it's 40 minutes to come to Jackson to eat. It's just like driving across town in Memphis, okay? It ain't a big deal to me. In fact, a lot less traffic. However, as I told Ed Jackson the other day, when in the heck are you going to finish and fix the road <laughs> on 412 as I come into Jackson. I think I'm off road. <laughs> My point is, we get blinders on ourselves and we don't see what it is. I was doing a talk for people in Crockett County years ago. Again, coming back and forth to Jackson, 
There was a trailer on the left-hand side as you come over the viaduct at the Bell's exit. It had been sitting there for 10 years. I said, did y'all see that trailer? <laughs> yeah. I said, y'all need to move that. People who don't live there see it. Doesn't set a good tone for your community. When we do, in the Jackson Chamber news this, they do research on numbers, and you know they're going to have access to that data. Jackson and Madison County and this whole region has done a good job of presenting the positives, and I'm thankful for that. I would tell you this. If I was going to invest $60 million to build a new facility in any of our communities in West Tennessee, I'm going to get the people to do the research. I'm going to listen to all the economic development people. And I'm going to come in some Saturday unannounced in a car, and I'm going to drive around. I will determine what the community looks like. So you got the show and the see. We all got warts. We got to be working on the warts. Okay. I have a Walmart theory. Yeah. I've traveled throughout the country, and in, unfortunately, traveling you always forget something, and you don't know. You know, you got to go get it. So where do you not logically go? Walmart. Just go in Walmart at 2 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. <laughs> You're going to see what your community really looks like, and it's going to scare you. Yeah. Not that they're bad people, but it's an impression of our communities and how we need to look at things. And I've maintained this since somebody told me I was going to be vice chairman of regional economic development. I said, what is that? And they said, well, you know, you travel a lot around, so you ought to be able to work with people in different communities. Well, look, nobody wants anybody from Dyer County going into Gibson County and tell them how to do things. So you don't do that. You just try and get them to understand they need to make some changes. Okay. This is a chart that was used in the presentations on, for Blue Oval City. The smaller area are those people within a 45 minute drive of the location. The larger surface area is within 90 minutes because the pitch is how many people are available in the workforce. And people are going to drive easily 45 minutes. We have people in Dyersburg that work across the river at the steel plants that come to Dyersburg because the education system is better. We have people who are in management positions in Dyersburg who live in Jackson. A lot of it is who we are and what we've seen and what we expect. And we all have to understand we have to compete, but we have to cooperate. And then those people in the coffee shops, I've heard this, they've told me, I don't understand why y'all can't get another industry. Just go get it. <laughs> yeah, right. It's all about getting the ribbon out, cutting it, and saying we got somebody coming in town. It's all, it's real easy. Well, it, it's not easy. Uh, it takes public policy and free enterprise to make deals happen. And why do we do it? Grandma and Grandpa, it was good enough for me. Why are y'all doing that? We want to make the place better. 
We want to make the place better so we can raise our kids and our grandkids. That's why we do it. That's what's important. And that's why those numbers are important, that you have to make some actions when you see them. So I always maintain, you just go back to the local coffee shop. And I, I used to do this every morning, but I don't anymore. I guess I'm getting too old to tolerate it every day. Uh, but listen, you will be amazed at what has been solved in their minds. So I tell people, you need to get off your duff. I mean, you can sit and talk about it all day long, but nothing's going to get changed until you get up and get engaged. It's all about leadership. Colin Powell is one of those guys that I thought was one of the best leaders. And you can fill in the blanks, okay? Being responsible sometimes means hacking somebody off. Doesn't mean that's the way you get everything done, but sometimes you gotta be prepared. So the question you have to ask yourself is, what is your legacy of leadership in your community? You can't do it alone, but you got to build relationships. Okay, final thought. Take your age and add 10 to it. 10 years is not a long time to get anything done in a community. I'm 74. My 10 year number is 84. I may not be here. So if I'm going to get anything done, I can't wait to tomorrow because I don't know if tomorrow will be there. And it takes a long time to move and make a true impact on our community. You can't change those numbers and your position overnight. It takes a commitment to move forward. I came up with this. You know, when you get my age and you go buy something, people say, well, it comes with a lifetime warranty. And to which I say, you know, when I was 40, that might have meant something. But at 74, that's not a long time of warranty. And then the other uh, hit me one day is, you know, we all take these surveys when we buy a product or and they got all the check boxes. Think about it next time you look at one. How many of those boxes have anything past 65 plus? They really don't care what I think. <laughs> but I can still make something happen. And, and I'm not finished, but I got to decide where do I want to spend the time and what's important. And everybody in this room has got a different perspective. But at the end of the day, you got to make that decision. It's not about who gets credit. It's making it a better place that we live. And the Boy Scouts had a great motto, leave the campground better than when you found it. That's what your obligation is. That's what your responsibility is in your community You've got to step up and execute and make it better. 
my grandchildren are 21 and 19 now. You know, they, my granddaughter will answer my text. My grandson won't. He's, quote, too busy. But he's not too busy uh, to take a little money from me. <laughs> but I hadn't figured out how to text that yet, <laughs> other than to say I put it in your account. Uh, they have to live with our inaction on whatever we're doing longer than I do. And that's our responsibility as humans. That's our responsibility as leaders. Thank you for your leadership. Remember, get off your duff and do something. Thank you all very much.